Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of June 19th, 2014. I'm Council President Bill Dwight. I'll be presiding. Uh, as per our usual custom, we start before we convene officially. We open up the uh, podium and the microphone for the public to speak on any topic that suits them, as long as it's uh, thoughtful and, and, and considerate. And uh, we, you, uh, we ask that you keep your comments under three minutes. And um, when you step up, please say your name and your address too, please. And we have a sign-up sheet, but that doesn't necessarily bump you off if you haven't been signed up on the sign-up sheet, but these are the first folks who did sign up. And first up will be Patty Shaughnessy, please. Good evening. Um, I'm gonna address my first item as the ABA coordinator for the city of Northampton, and that would be for um, a positive vote on the handicap parking up in Lawrence, which will be in front of Bird on Maple Street. And that parking space has been requested by a number of seniors as well as persons with disabilities. And so it has gone through the Commission on Disability as a, a need. And so I would highly uh, encourage you to vote in favor of that parking space in Florence. Um, now, as the Council on Aging Director, I encourage you to um, uh, make the appointments for John Kaczynski, Michael Hearn, and Catherine Pekela's service to our board. Um, they served well, and we would love to see them reappointed. And then also a new appointment is uh, Diana Solar. Um, and she would be a welcomed addition to our board as well. And with all of the reappointments and appointments, we will be back to having a full board again. The other thing I would just like to mention is um, Mary Smith, who was one of our long time board members, passed away on Tuesday. So uh, Mary was a very active board member as well as a very active volunteer in the senior center. Um, and Mary started off volunteering when we were over here at Memorial Hall. So. Mary will be dearly missed. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Tori, Tori Eklund, you're next. <coughs> I'm Tori Eklund, and I'm the chair of the Northampton Commission on Disabilities. An ordinance has been placed, which will be coming forth tonight, sponsored by City Councilor Mary Ann Labarge and the Northampton Commission on Disability to place a handicapped parking space on Maple Street in Florence in front of Bird's Market. I am asking for full support on the first vote being placed in front of City Council tonight. Several individuals with disabilities and some who are elderly have asked for this and the Commission on Disability feels it would be very beneficial to our community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tori. Paul Waterman, please. Good evening. My name is Paul Waterman, and I live at 16 Fairview Avenue in this great city of ours. I've been around a long time, um, <clears throat> but I'm here to tell you a saga of woe. You know, in all of our personal lives, we have things happen to us that uh, we can foresee, and sometimes we don't foresee them. About two, two eh, maybe two months ago, I was laid off from my job, but I saw it coming. And because I saw it coming, I was able to plan ahead. I was able to take my finances and figure out what we could spend money on, what we had to save, what we couldn't spend money on. But the point is, is that I had to plan ahead because I knew that my income stream was gonna be limited during the time that I was laid off. And the thing that I feared most, believe it or not, was being able to pay my taxes. You know, I was afraid that I wouldn't pay the real estate tax or the CPA or the new storm water tax or the excise tax or my water and sewer fees. But again, because I planned, I think I'll be all right this time. But I often wondered what would happen if I took the tack that some of you did back in, I think, October, November, where the fire department came in with the mayor and expressed um, proudly, kind of at the time, that they had reached a resolution. Some of you pleaded with your hearts that because the city budget couldn't afford it, you just couldn't pass the contract. And I know there are issues behind the walls that happened, and I know there are things that, you know, 
don't need to be said in public, but some of you were very, very concerned about the fire department and really expressed a heartfelt desire to be able to pass and fund the contract, but you just couldn't do it. So I kind of wondered to myself, what would happen if I called the tax collector's office and said, now that I'm laid off, I'm sorry, I just can't pay my taxes. I can't afford it. What would happen, do you think? That's a rhetorical question. Let's think about that for a minute. <laughs> so, but fortunately, again, because I planned ahead, I can probably, I only have 56 seconds. That's almost a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let me get to the point, really. <laughs> uh, last, in the last meeting, uh, one of the counselors sitting here described uh, the comfortable budget situation that you have and that in three years or so, you're gonna have to pass another override. To me, that's very poor leadership. <clears throat> As I just described in my own personal situation, knowing that something was gonna happen to my cash flow, I had to plan for it. I think if you know that there's gonna be another override in another three years or X number of years, you better start planning now because that's what you need to do as leaders. And if you're not willing to do that, then you deserve to sit in the seats that you're sitting in. I will not, I supported every override for the schools, for the fire department, everything that the city wanted, I supported. I will not support another override if I don't see any activity now trying to postpone or eliminate the danger of an override in another three years. It's your obligation to the citizens of Northampton if you think that you're gonna run out of money or not gonna have enough money or you're gonna have an interruption of your cash stream to start planning now. So, and I'll be glad to help. <laughs> during that planning process. Don't disappoint us, okay? Don't disappoint us in three years and just simply sit back with the comfortableness that you have in your chairs right now and not do anything about it uh, so that the citizens of Northampton can get behind an override if they're convinced that they really need it. But don't be poor <coughs> and not do anything about it. That's all I had to say. It was great to see you guys. Have a great evening. Thank you very much, Paul. <coughs> Jasper Lapiansky. <coughs> this is not a public comment about recycling, but my notes are written on the back of uh, an agenda from last council. Before I make my own comments, I want to speak on behalf of a couple of different friends of mine who both within the last week have remarked to me that the crosswalk uh, time on Main Street and Pleasant Street, the main intersection, is not enough for some elderly people to get all the way across, and then they're stuck in the middle of traffic. I don't know why they were telling me that, but I told them I'd say, I'd tell you. My public comment has to do with uh, money and the budget, and I am the exact opposite of a budget geek. I usually have nothing to say. Generally speaking, the numbers are boring to me. But I thought about it, right? A hundred million dollars sounds like a lot of money. Obviously a little bit more would make things easier. Kids could stay awake in school and so on. But then I thought about another number which is a little bit higher. It's the 600 billion dollars that we're gonna spend on the military this year. President Obama and Congress are gonna approve it if they haven't already. You break that down, so you do a subtraction problem, the 318 million people in the US, then you do a multiplication problem, the number of people in Northampton, and you get about 50, let's see, $53.8 million a year, and that's not counting veterans benefits, interest on the debt, all these things that we spend Think about if we had $53.8 million a year more for Northampton and we weren't going to war with Iraq again. We could send kids to school whenever they wanted to. We could pay the Northampton pedal cabs to take them all there. Or better yet, we could build with $53 million a year. We could build a high-speed rail line to Washington, D.C., buy everyone in town a ticket, go down there and protest the war in Iraq. The point being, not only do I support previous and future rhetorical measures that have been criticized, um, the council has an interest in national policy because 
far more consequential than prop two and a half. This is robbing us of our cash flow. And uh, it's causing the overrides. So no war in Iraq. Yes, schools and teachers and firefighters. I'm a broken record. But there are your numbers. Thank you very much. David Newton, please. Good evening. My name is David Newton, and I live at 211 North Street uh, in the Twin Cleaners building. I live on the corner, fairly close to the corner of Lincoln and North, which is part of why I have kind of a, a well-honed research uh, history on the dynamic of the 18-wheeler issue uh, throughout our whole ward, but in particular, more concentratedly, in the Lincoln Avenue sector, uh, with other side streets involved. Uh, I'm, I'm here to support the, uh, the amendment to the uh, proposition uh, wholeheartedly. <coughs> and uh, it's a great idea that we, re, uh, that we bring this back to the surface again, because I, I, I don't know the history of it. I'm sure a lot of you who have uh, been in town for a long time have know what the dis previous discussions have been that relate to this um, in the past and how the signage that now exists came to be and the suggestion for the new signage is, in a, is in a, an extension of that thinking and it's a great idea. Um, my, I would only add to that that the, the redesigning and the coordination between the city and the RDPW and the Mass uh, Highway Department in the design of the new Exit 19 uh, is, is working right along. And I would implore the, the interested parties at the council member and at the mayor's office and at the Coke plant and in Ward 3 to get, enter into a kind of a collaborative discussion about how to go beyond the signage to help the drivers get out of their predicament that they find themselves in on Bridge Street once they've made that left-hand turn off the ramp. My suggestion is that the, the, that the key to the problem, or the key to the solution of the problem, <coughs> lies in how you design the rampway, not only with signage, but with whatever methods help the drivers go where they need to go, which is basically on to, um, help me with the name of the street. Industrial? Uh, the, the, the straight away, the, what? Damon Road, thank you. <clears throat> it, they need to go to Damon Road and not turn left. Once they turn left, it, the problem looms large in front of them and in front of us. So once they've turned, the signage is kind of a stop that measure and will help possibly, although you may end up with the syndrome of more trucks down at the very center of the city at the railroad overpass because they've obeyed all the signage on the way. So I, I just <coughs> mentioned that as, a, as something to think about as an extension of the thinking beyond the signage that we're hopefully going to be able to get that will, that will help. So thanks. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that's all we have signed up, but anyone's welcome to speak who would like to speak. Uh, Bernadette, did you want to speak? Thanks, Bill. Thanks, familiar faces, uh, that these people that you are that do this incredible service. Wow. I just have to bow to you with some of my time. Um, I'm here tonight. Bernadette, uh, can, you, can you state your name and address for the oh, record? Oh, so. sure. Sorry, I don't do this very often. Not everyone knows you, but that yet. Bernadette Giblin, 110 William Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. Thank you. All right, so I'm here tonight to talk to you um, about um, something on the docket for the spraying of Phragmites over at Fitzgerald Lake. Um, I've had the ability to see the great work of this Broadbrook group. They're an amazing organization. They're conservationists, just like myself. 
Uh, I know they're requesting, like they have done many, many springs, the money to um, spray for invasive species removal. Um, it's actually Phragmates. They look like cattails. They've got non-native ones, and they want more native ones. Um, I really want to speak to you tonight because, as many of you know, I am an organic land care professional. I actually help communities and property owners do things naturally without the use of um, pesticides and herbicides, which are incredibly hazardous to our health and the water supply. I'd like you all to think about the fact that um, this is Roundup that will be sprayed. That's what Rodeo is. It's called glyphosate. Um, and this particular spray application will include a surfactant, which makes the product more mobile in the water. It's a lot of dense material to take in. I'm trying to synthesize it quickly. But basically, there are innovative approaches that are being used where they're actually using biological controls in the Great Lakes. And a lot of why they're doing this is because they can see it's costing communities way too much money and it's not sustainable. I know this gentleman says he has a uh, record of success in this region. Region. He sprayed three times. Why is he spraying a fourth? I'd like to hear some real hard data. How many numbers of plants is he reducing? Um, are they really looking at, is it migrating uh, in the water? I know these folks do do water supplies, but I will tell you in the U.S. right now, USGS does not even test for glycosate. The fact that the <coughs> spray application he's recommending will have a surfactant is of concern to me. Um, mostly rodeo is used in these places because surfactants are so dangerous. I know we're all thinking about water in a new way, and I want folks to know that, um, you know, obviously Conservation Commission has done great work to seek out this gentleman who they feel is a very responsible, ecologically minded contractor, um, but a lot is changing in this arena every day because we live in the world of climate change where these plants are magnifying and more of this old spray approach is really not very forward thinking when we think about what it's doing to our water. Most of the research that is done, I will remind you, is done by manufacturers. In Denmark, they banned this project, product a decade ago because their research actually showed stuff was moving 10 times greater than what the manufacturer had reported. So when we hear from one business person it's safe, um, I'd encourage you all to vote no. You have a window of time until October to do this application and explore these other resources first. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does, would anyone else like to speak? Only once. Only twice. Okay. I'll ask the secretary to call the roll. Councilor Rapp. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor White. Here. Um, Council Carney. Present. Excuse me. Council Murphy. Here. Council O'Donnell. Here. Council Sarah. Here. Council Sexton. Here. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I should repeat that Council Klein uh, is absent with an excuse. Um, we have no presentation scheduled, uh, nor public hearings. Um, uh, the mayor is here. Are there communications from the mayor? <laughs> no communications from the mayor. Uh, one minute announcements. Now, I, I would like to remind folks that Councilor Paul Specker had announced that he would have an announcement. <laughs> my, my announcement I have no announcements this evening. <laughs> I think the council is abusing the privilege. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are there any I'm other ones? I'm trying to think of one. <laughs> I thought that was for Wow. Okay. I'm almost ready for a German. Um, no licenses and petitions. So we come up to approval of minutes. Move to approve. We have a motion made to approve seconds from the last meeting and seconded. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now, we also have up next the reports of committees and appointments and elections. Uh, the meeting minutes from rules, orders, appointments, and ordinance meeting of May 12th. Uh, the minutes uh, from social service, veterans, culture, and recreation of April 23rd. And the minutes from the Committee on Economic and Community Development, Housing, and Land Use of April 1st. And the meeting minutes from the Committee on Public Safety of May 5th, 2014. Would you like to move them as a group or would you like to move them as a group? 
motion to make it to move them as a group. Second. And seconded. Uh, any discussion on these minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Holy cats. I, I, I suspect we're out of some post traumatic stress response from the last <laughs> meeting, which went nearly forever. <laughs> it just adjourned, it feels like 20 minutes ago. So, uh, up next, this is a new appointment to the housing partnership, Peter Frothingham. Uh, the term from May 12th, 2012, oh, the end to May 2015, it's filling the unexpired term of Patty McGill. This comes with a positive recommendation from all rules, orders, appointments, and ordinances. Uh, is there a motion? There's a motion to approve. Second. This candidate has been moved and approved and seconded. Any discussion on the candidate? Council of the Barge. Yes. Um, I think a lot of people know Peter, and he has done so much for the city of Northampton. He has, if you look at his record on his application, he has been involved in many, many committees. And I am very happy to see that he is going on housing partnership. He's an accomplished architect and also very committed and devoted to the community. All right. All those in favor of Peter Frothingham uh, fulfilling the unexpired term of Patty McGill, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Next up is a new appointment for the city treasurer, um, Chris Bissell, and Christine Bissell, I'm sorry, of. Uh, 92 Bissell Road, Goshen, Mass. Uh, this also comes, this is to uh, rise up the status of city treasurer, uh, a, a vacated office, and it comes with a positive recommendation from rules, orders, appointments, and ordinances on June 16th. I'll accept a motion. I would move we endorse the appointment. Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion on Chris's credentials? Councilor LaBarge. Yes, um, I did not know her at all until I met her in ordinance. And, um, and it's amazing because, I mean, how many times do we go into the treasurer's office? And I had the right to talk with her because not knowing her and not knowing her workability and so forth, I had some concerns about how many people were interviewed. and. Um, that was important to me, and hearing from our financial director who was on the interviewing process, I, I thank Susan for settling what I needed to know, so I will support this. Any other discussions? I know Chris is my former bank teller years and years and years ago uh, at, at the Savings Bank, and thought highly of her then, I think even more highly of her now. And so I too, I think, I think she's an excellent choice. <coughs> um, any further discussion on the candidate? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Next up is, uh, you heard referred to in public comments, a new appointment to the Council on Aging, uh, Diana Solar of 241 Jackson Street. <coughs> the term starting April 2014, expiring 20, April 2017. Also, with a positive recommendation from rules, orders, appointments, and ordinances on uh, June, uh, June 16th. Move to appoint. Second. Motions made and seconded to advance the candidate. Any discussion? Council yes. Um, I met Diana through Casa Latina. Um, she was highly recommended by Anita Garcia, which I think, Council President, you know Anita. I think. Um, she is going to be a great asset for the Senior Center of bringing in more elderly seniors of Latino families, and she's just very, very motivated, and I am really happy about this appointment. Any other discussion on the candidate? All those in favor of the appointment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, and then we come to also refer to in the public comment uh, reappointments to the Council on Aging for Micah Hearn Jr. of 24th Street, uh, term starting April 2014, expiring 20, April 2017. John Kaczynski Jr., 39 Lino Terrace, uh, the term 
I'm assuming also April 2014 to April 2017. And Catherine Pacella Service, 9 Butler Place, the term once again also running April 2014 to April 2017. I'll move these appointments as a group. Second. Motions are made to move them as a group and seconded. Any discussion on these candidates? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? And I should I forgot to mention that they also came with positive recommendations for all the candidates <laughs> from um, from ordinance. Now comes this magical moment where we change <coughs> from a city council meeting to a finance committee meeting. Recess. I'm passing the gavel figuratively to uh, Councilor Murphy, who chairs that committee. Where is the gavel? I don't know if someone made off with it. <laughs> well, then it is figurative. <laughs> it comes up in public safety. Somebody's made off with the gavel. <laughs> while, while Bill's looking for the gavel, Mary, you want, or uh, Pam, you want to call the roll of finance? Here. Council 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 Here. Yes. So uh, to start off with, we have uh, a couple of more financial transfers as we wind down fiscal 14. Um, the first is order that $316,700 be appropriated from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance to the following accounts. $66,700 legal services OM, $125,000 to the capital stabilization fund, and $125,000 to the stabilization stabilization fund. Uh, do we have a motion on this and then we'll hear from there? So second. Uh, good evening uh, city councilors. Uh, this is uh, again as, as is customary we're getting now to the very end of the fiscal year and so as you may recall the our undesignated fund balance um, essentially disappears after June 30th um, until all of the undesignated funds or free cash as it's referred to for um, the FY14 budget are accounted for by the DOR and then that's released to us usually in November and December. So it's been our practice, um, well, to, to make some transfers at the very end of the year of our, of our remaining, of parts of our remaining free cash balance. The first is a final transfer to the legal budget. This is we think will cover all of the remaining bills uh, that we still have coming due for um, the month of June for legal services. And then the second two are to place uh, $125,000 in our capital stabilization fund and $125,000 into our stabilization fund. Again, to move that from free <coughs> cash into those stabilization funds. Um, as part of our overall strategy to increase those funds, and in, as I've said in past years, those funds don't go away after June 30th. Those stabilization funds remain. Um, and so uh, so that's the purpose of the order. And uh, we would request two readings because uh, you can't take a second reading after June 30th because, again, free cash closes by June 30th. So this is our final opportunity to move any uh, remaining free cash around within the budget. And. And adding money to the stabilization funds makes our bond rating people very happy, does it not? Yes, again, so we've been talking a lot, and we talk about it in the budget. Um, there's lots of, uh, in, in the budget itself, we've um, talked about how we've worked really hard to, to hit some of those targets in terms of where our stabilization is, and our capital stabilization is as a percentage of our budget. And so again, this just helps us get closer to that goal. Any, any questions for the mayor or any questions at all any discussion hearing none all in favor of Aye. A positive recommendation Aye. 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 any opposed Great. Um, we have another budgetary transfer order that the following FY 2014 budgetary transfers be in or hereby made in the city clerk's office moving six hundred and seventy seven dollars from election workers to permanent salaries in central service moving sixteen thousand for permanent salaries to repairs and maintenance in building inspectors office moving $3,500 from per personal salaries or permanent salaries to office equipment in parking maintenance move 500 from the electrical budget to permanent salaries in workers compensation move $8,800 uh, workers compensation over to police fire and accident uh, medical insurance we're going to take $28,000 from there and move it uh, to other employee benefits, Medicare, and workers' compensation, we're going to move $45 from workers' compensation over to the telephone account. All of those total 
$57,522. Mayor, um, I guess going to address this one too. Again, these are all, uh, this is all funds that are part of the budget and we're just doing some final uh, movement um, in various accounts. Um, some of you may have noticed the work that's being done on the steps of City Hall. Uh, that's actually the funding that you see that's being some excess um, uh, salaries funding is being moved over to O&M because we're trying to address some safety issues on the front steps and the stoop of City Hall. Uh, so that's a project that um, uh, we're trying to do. We actually had attempted to try to use, uh, uh, we were hoping to try to use some of our CPA money that we had been awarded for the all the exterior projects that are happening, but we're told that we would need to resubmit a new application. So we've just decided, while we've got the contractor here, we want to just get that work done. So that's why we're doing that work. And the other ones are just, again, truing up accounts uh, in order to uh, cover uh, what's needed in, in those accounts. Good. Any questions for the mayor on this one? Any discussion? Then all in favor of a positive aye. recommendation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Uh, the next financial order is upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the Northampton City Council gratefully accepts a donation of $1,700, a gift to the city of Northampton towards the installation of a rainbow crosswalk on Main Street for the Northampton Pride Parade, and in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, <coughs> approves the use of the gifted funds to reimburse the DPW street paving and marking supplies budget. We have a motion on this one? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion on this? I think we're all familiar. Anybody have a question for the mayor on this one? I think we know what this one's all about. Hearing no discussion, all in favor of a positive recommendation on the gift? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thank you. And the last one is upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the sum of $81,650 be and hereby is appropriated to the emergency demolition account from the FY14 general fund free cash for the demolition of a condemned structure located at 171 King Street in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 143 subsection 6 through 9, inclusive in the Massachusetts State Building Code um, CMR 780 section 116.1 and pursuant to the recovery provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 139 subsection 3A as such provisions are incorporated into Mass General Law 143 subsection 9. And this one I'm sure the mayor does want to talk about. Yes, and, and actually I've asked our building commissioner, Mr. Hasbrook, to be here, as and Deputy Fire Chief John Davin is here as well from the Northampton Fire Department, um, who can talk about this. This is a, a, an example where we do sometimes have to utilize uh, Mass General Law in order to um, have funding necessary if we need to um, ourselves demolish a building. But I want to have the building commissioner really explain the process and the fact that the city, and emphasize the fact that the city ultimately does get reimbursed uh, for this funding if, in fact, we have to uh, take that step. So I would ask for you to recognize Mr. Hasbrook and Deputy Fire Chief Davin. Make a motion to recognize Second. Hasbrook. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good evening, I'm Louis Hasbrook, the Building Commissioner for the City of Northampton. I'm here to request the funding to demolish the building at 171 King Street. It's the former Honda dealer, um, presently owned by Don Leah. And we've been, asking, we've been asking Mr. Leah to secure the building for a considerable length of time. In March of this year, there was a fire in the building. And then again, in May of this year, um, the police found an, another trespasser in the building. The building is in, in, in not in good condition. We've surveyed the building. We've come to the determination that um, given the condition of the building and seemingly the determination of people to get into the building, it can't be uh, secured and it needs to be demolished. Um, I issued an order to have it demolished on June 6th in accordance with Mass General Law 143, Section 6, and the owner has not complied with the order. So we're, we're requesting the funding, if the owner does not comply with the order, that the city be allowed to go forward, and we need that funding. I've handed that around uh, the, some of the letters we've, that we've sent, a survey of the building, which details the uh, 
conditions and the supporting legislation. Um, the city is able to place a lien on the property and to recoup the money either as taxes or to ultimately could force a sale of the building the property. I mean, of the property. The property is is quite valuable, and I I see this lien as being a very small portion of its value. And I have no reason to think that we wouldn't be able to recoup this money. Oh, please, Council. Um, so my question is, is uh, these funds are only needed if the owner does not respond to your If request. the owner refuses to respond. And if we have to tear it down, the owner has to pay it back at, at, with interest at 6%, right? Right. It's, we would be at, we would plus uh, uh, legal fees, um, collection fees. It's it's not a simple. We'll do it, and then you can pay us back. Um, Councilor, are there funds associated with this also with non-compliance? Are, are they liable to any fines? We, the we we would have the opportunity to find the individual if, and and there'll be discussions, I believe, at the point where. We are poised to move forward. Um, the st statute does allow a hundred dollar a day fine for noncompliance. I'm sorry. There's some follow up also on that. Uh, as to the issue of safety, I mean, there was a fire that was started there and it was addressed by the Northampton Fire Department. Clearly, the only source of that fire could have been someone inside the building igniting that fire because there's no functioning services in there. It's nothing to spontaneously combust. So consequently, that puts our fire department and our emergency response services at risk because they don't know if someone's in that building. They have to act and approach that building as if there are people in there. And the fact that the building not, has not been secured, it is, it is, it, this is an issue about an eyesore. We don't deal with eyesores this way. This is an actual, by your determination and the fire department's determination, this is a, an actual safety hazard to Northampton personnel and citizens. That's correct, and I'll, I'll let uh, Deputy Chief Davin speak to that. D.C. Gavin, you're, you're welcome sure. to speak to that issue. Thank this. you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I, honestly, the first thing I think about when, whenever we have an incident down there is um, back to uh, December 1999. The city of Worcester lost six firefighters in a Worcester cold storage warehouse building. It was an abandoned building. Uh, they had reports of homeless people in there. You know, they, they went in, did what they had to do, but they lost six firefighters. And, you know, Granted, it's a lot smaller scale, I understand that, but I, I don't want to be in the position to have to send firefighters in there. Uh, their job's dangerous enough. You know, it's an abandoned building. There's holes in it. We can't secure it. They've tried. Um, they just can't properly secure it. You know, there's people in and out of there. And, you know, as you said, if, if a fire starts in there, you know, there's no power to the building. Obviously, you know, there's probably somebody in there, and we're going to have to make an effort to search that building at some point. So. You know, and I can just, all I can speak to is a danger for our personnel. And, you know, I, I just, I don't want to be in that position. So I, I would ask that we, we just tear it down and be done with it. Councilor LaBarge. Louie, I think I heard you say something to the effect that you've been dealing with the owner for about six years on the building. We've been, the building's been empty since 2005, and we've been, there have been incidents right along. We've asked that the building be secured. The building is secured. The um, people who are attempting to gain entry will pull the plywood down. I think one time a whole uh, load of a whole, a, a large number of sheets of plywood were taken. Um, I, so many people have been complaining about that site for several years. And hearing what Deputy Chief Devine has to say about the fires and about people's lives. I can't understand how they're getting in there. Are they? How are they getting into that? There's most, holes all over it. Most I mean, recently, they've climbed up onto their back roof and come across the roof and kicked in the second floor windows. And yeah. my big fear is that that second, the roof, uh, the lower portion of the roof is is rotted and. Uh, even if it were just an adventurous teenager, if they fell through, it's quite a ways down and they could be hurt. Now, you mentioned something about June 6th with the owner. I issued the order to make safe, and it was an order to actually demolish the building because we couldn't 
assume that it could be made safe on June 6th. And what did the owner say? The owner has, um, I've had numerous conversations with the owner and they're attempting to locate a, a demolition contractor at a price that seems acceptable to them. And uh, I think that at this point the city um, is, uh, the city has an obligation, I hope that the city will approve this funding because I, as the building official, have an obligation to, to make sure that this building is safe and the only way it could be done is if it were demolished. I have to agree with you. It's a safety issue. It's a sore site. I think you've worked very closely with the owner and I will support this amount of money. Councilor Kearney. Um, <clears throat> I agree that the, uh, that there's a safety <coughs> hazard there and that this building does need to be raised and will approve the funding. I have a slightly, um, but certainly related question just because it's the same property and maybe it's better for the mayor, but we use that property presently to store all of the snow, excess snow in the city. Is this, um, or is there the arrangement that we have, is that an arrangement with the same owner and the same? Um, we have had an arrangement. We've had to modify it over time. Um, and I want to be clear too that, you know, we, my administration um, has been trying to work with the owner of this property. Um, I've had an opportunity to meet with their representatives actually after the fire. Um, uh, Terry Masterson has been working with them very diligently uh, and trying to work through some issues with DEP on the property to try to get to try to help get this site redeveloped. I think there's a I think everyone in Northampton has been concerned about the look of the property. What I'm concerned about is there's a vacant, valuable commercial parcel that's sitting there that should be put into service. So we've been working hard to do that. So my hope is that. Um, that in spite of this demolition, we'll still be able to have um, have a relationship. But frankly, the city has been looking for a new snow dump anyway because we can't rely um, on this forever as a snow dump. But we, we, you know, we've we've I believe we're in good stead in terms of that going forward. But we'll have to see how it goes. Okay, yeah. thank you. And I know I've I, I'm hopeful that I'm happy to vote to make this money available to you to have that option but I'm hopeful that they do the right thing and take the building down I know I've I've talked to them at well at times and they've spoken very positively about their reputation with the city of Northampton I know they've let fire use that to stage and practice they let us put the snow there they they really like Northampton and they've been good to the city and I think they'll or I hope they'll rise to the occasion do the right thing and take the building down and certainly it doesn't hurt if we're in a position to do it and attach their built their property for that they know we mean business but I'm, I'm hopeful they'll just you know be be the kind of good corporate citizens they've been to this point and actually take action themselves and take the building down so well, I hope they do I want to make it clear that we're not I'm not um, <clears throat> requesting the funding because it's an eyesore or because it would be easier to develop if there weren't a property um, those things have been true for quite a while but the, the actual deterioration of the building to the point where it can't be secured is something that's been happened recently and that's why we're moving forward at this point. No and they're clearly in all the development plans I've ever heard for that site none of them include that building. Sooner or later that building is going away and if it's unsafe to have there and, and it's unsafe to our firefighters and to the, the people who may break into the building on a lark it really should go away because there's no reuse for it. Councilor. And, and I think we should emphasize it's not a punitive measure. Mm -hmm. This is not a punitive measure. The point, in fact, is that, as Council Murphy points out, um, the property owners have been good corporate citizens and, and by, by and large, have been trying to address this problem. But there is a sense of urgency here. And I, it, the charge that you two hold, which is protection of staff and citizens, <coughs> is of paramount importance. And that's what this is. This is addressing that issue. It is not. <coughs> attack on any individual or any corporation so any other questions in finance any other discussion then all in favor of a positive recommendation aye. you say aye. aye any opposed thank you thank, thank you, you. General. um yeah do we want the these gentlemen to stay for the regular no. meeting or no. can they be on their way We're we don't need them thank you, thank you gentlemen and as there's nothing else in finance, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to come out of recess and back into the meeting. Um,
crisis requires the investigation. No. Um, well, here we are. We find ourselves um, to uh, a second reading on the proposed budget. Um, and I'm out of sympathy for counselors and for television workers and folks watching at home, I will not completely reread <laughs> all the fun that I did last time, but it will allow that I, uh, that on each order, I will read the amount of words allocated. Okay. Uh, without giving the larger uh, sermon. So I would move the FY15 general fund budget of eighty million six hundred forty-five thousand seven hundred thirty-two dollars. Move to approve. Uh, well, second. I'll second. Well, it has been seconded. I, uh, I would hope there's some discussion. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, this well, is. I, a, I will, well, do, we I will, do we need to ask to waive any second reading of this? Yes. This is. Right. Um, I mean, to waive the actual reading the actual that reading? took about no, an hour. No, actually. Uh, did that I did that before more out of a courtesy and, and, right. and the council has expressed and the public has expressed a desire to know what it is the items that we're discussing and, and at the last meeting I did do that and as you recall it was very long and involved and the budget is available on the city website but sparing everyone the the minutia of revolving funds and and I just meant procedurally so Procedurally, the there's no requirement yeah, necessarily to, to even have read it in the first. As far as I understand, okay. there's no requirement to. So, but you asked for discussion, um, yeah. and just comment. So I'll, I'll say the same thing I said last time, which is in the years I've been on the council, I've been slowly learning about how the budget works, and this time the way this budget is presented makes it very clear and and easy not only for me who've been looking at this, but I think for other people looking at the budget. I just want to praise the mayor and. And um, his office for the work we've done on this, because I think it was inc incredibly clear, and I think that's important when people are looking at this to be able to understand it. Councilor Murphy. Well, I just like to respond a little to the public comment that was made or earlier, and it was a very earnest public comment, and I appreciate the fact that many citizens may feel that way, but unfortunately, you know, the reality of Proposition Two and a Half are 1980s vintage, and the economic realities since then have changed. And there really is no plausible way for, take, we, for us to take the money that we have today and have that financial reality last indefinitely. Mm. It just can't be done uh, for reasons uh, that people all are comfortable with. I mean, you take health insurance, fuel, and our employees alone, and all of those sources over three years or into the next contract may well grow more than our 2.5% levy growth allows. Um, and it will all remember um, dealing with just the fire contract alone and the fact that we, you know, we love our firefighters, but we couldn't afford to fund that arbitrator's ruling realistically. And those sort of things are going to continue to happen. So we have to face the fact that at some point in time, our, our financial needs, given those three things alone, are going to outgrow our ability to live within our requirements of Proposition 2.5. And we're going to have to deal with retirement and retiree health care because of the Gadsby changes. It, it's just I can understand why taxpayers would earnestly be concerned about our ability to do that. But I just don't see how that's possible. And I want to be respectful and realistic about the fact that sooner or later, those accounts alone are going to require us to have to ask the taxpayers again, how do you want us to address this, and are you going to give us the money to do that? I mean, I've, I'm very comfortable. We're a well-run financial city. Our auditors feel that way. Our bond rating companies feel that way. I think we're running a financially responsible city. But that the economic reality says that we're just not going to be able to live within 2.5% for more than three or four more years, at least in my opinion, and that we're going to have to deal with going back to the citizens and saying, the status quo cannot be maintained. Do you want to pay some more to keep the status quo, or are you going to ask us to please reduce our services to you to save the money? And and that's we're good next year. We're probably good the year after that. But somewhere down the road, we're going to have to return to deal with that. Just and if you look at our economic history, it's there. It, it's just reality. 
and unfortunate reality sometimes messes up our best wishes but I, I think that it will and I, I made the comment only because you know I I understand where the gentleman who spoke tonight is coming from a lot of citizens feel that way you know when we're an aging population and more and more people are going on fixed incomes and it's not easy uh, for them to survive and maybe our reality will be we have to respond to that and say yeah we're gonna have to cut back and not get another override I think we we're very fortunate this time the citizens rose to the occasion and said we appreciate what services we have and we want to pay for them uh, but that that was a very valuable decision they made and I don't think we can count on them making it every time uh, particularly if our economy doesn't rebound more than it has so Councilor Adams. I also just want to emphasize like I said last time as, as well um, the fiscal stability plan has been extended to 2020 so um, I don't think there's a lack of long-term planning um, that and, and long-term thinking involved thank you Um, and I would add to that that, the, that we were charged um, by Mr. Waterman to make a plan. In fact, he said he was prepared to support an override, provided that we showed a, a good, spirited, vested interest in, in doing that. The mayor and, and Susan Wright have, when they advocated for the override, expressed a long-term plan that took us into, as Councilor Adams pointed out, and beyond the original uh, three-year projection. Mm -hmm. And the other issue about overrides and Prop 2 and a half, Prop 2 and a half, we tend to forget how Prop 2 and a half came about. The whole argument originally presented, and I think it's flawed, but the fact is that the argument that was presented was that they were going to require communities, they knew the communities were never going to meet the conditions set by two and a half. It didn't even correspond with inflation. They knew that there will always be the pressure point, but it was to force governments to ask the citizens if they're prepared to invest further. Somehow that got translated and turned into some a distorted attitude that Proposition 2 and a half is an admission of failure, of economic failure and bad planning. In point of fact, that's simply not true. All communities are pressured into this point, or all communities suffer when they don't address that point. And there are a number of communities surrounding here they used to brag on the fact that they haven't passed any overrides who are currently closing school systems or laying off teachers, <coughs> and, and they have trouble finding managers for their cities and towns, their communities and towns. So, and, and I think I take his words to heart. I take Paul Waterman's words to heart, and I believe the mayor, the executive is as, as well, and I know that this council does, is that, that and to Council Murphy's point, we are actually a very well managed city and the proof in that is reflected with our audits with our bond rating with with the fact that we in particular this time around are addressing a budget that doesn't include any layoffs it doesn't include any significant cuts and actually allows the restoration of, of programs that have been missing in the past and with the anticipation that we'll be able to do that many years few years more years beyond this one time so I'm I'm more than happy to, to approve this budget and I'm also more than happy to take uh, Mr. Waterman's advice. Any other discussion on this? Um, okay, the, the motion actually is for, this is, uh, is was moved with the <coughs> line item, which is 80, uh, <laughs> 80, million. 80 million, sorry, 80,000 be sweet, 80, 80 million, 645,732 dollars. And I will ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Next up, we have a series of enterprise funds, and I don't know if you want to move them as a group. Uh, them as a, yeah, I would like to move item two through five, <coughs> the. Um, Sewer Enterprise Fund, the Water Enterprise Fund, the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund, and the Stormwater Enterprise Fund as a group. And those items in that order, and I'll, I haven't heard a second though. Second. Second. Second, second to move them as a group. Okay. <laughs> the, on the Sewer Enterprise Fund budget of $6,238,100. Mr. President, sir, can those be projected? Unfortunately, the projector is okay. a funding issue. <laughs> No, hopefully it needs to have its filter cleaned as well. Okay. It's crying. Mm -hmm. it's, so I'm sorry. Protesting. Okay. Um, the uh, Water Enterprise Fund budget of $8,811,826. Uh, 
the solid waste enterprise fund budget of one million ninety eight thousand two hundred sixty one dollars and the stormwater enterprise fund budget of one million nine hundred eighty thousand and fifty six dollars and that motion has been made in discussion on these items to approve the, the motions been made in, in second and already so um, of course it's the secretary leaves we won't be able to do the roll you look for the gavel <laughs> Any luck? <laughs> no further discussion on these items? Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the call goes out to the public. The public responds and thank you. Thank you. Uh, so please call the roll on items two through uh, five. five. Two through five. I'm sorry. A little update warning popped up on my computer. Yes. 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 It is they is passed in second reading. The uh, item number six, Council Murphy. I would move item six, which is establish other post employment benefits uh, liability trust fund. Second it. The motions been made to for item number six. Uh, any discussion on it? Call the yes. 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 So we have some revolving funds. You might recall those. I uh, will spare you reading those. But Council Murphy, you want to make a motion? For I would. Approval? I would move all of the revolving funds. That would be item seven through twenty-six. But I'll leave it to the council president to describe. Okay. Uh, we have the energy and sustainability revolving fund of one hundred thousand dollars the fire department hazmat revolving fund of sixty five thousand dollars the department of public works construction services revolving fund of eighty five thousand dollars cross connection program revolving fund of seventy five thousand dollars the council on aging transportation revolving fund of fifty thousand dollars the ncoa uh, activities revolving fund of ninety thousand dollars the ncoa and by the way that's northampton council on aging gift shop Revolving fund of twenty thousand dollars, the NCOA food services revolving fund of fifty thousand dollars, the NCOA uh, senior publications revolving fund of fifty thousand dollars, the NCOA trips and travel revolving fund of one hundred thousand dollars, the recreation department athletic leagues league fees revolving fund of two hundred thirty thousand dollars, JFK Aquatic Family <coughs> Center revolving fund of one hundred twenty thousand dollars. The Northampton School Department Transportation Revolving Fund, $175,000. Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School Farm Revolving Fund of $200,000. Tourism Directional Sign Program Revolving Fund of $20,000. The Public Health Nursing Revolving Fund of $20,000. James House Revolving Fund of $75,000. The Public Health Sharps Disposal Program Revolving Fund of $15,000. Uh, the Public Safety Dispatch Fire Alarm Monitoring Program Revolving Fund of $45,000. The DPW Reuse Committee uh, Revolving Fund of $5,000. $5,000? Uh, the Senior Work Off Abatement Program of $1,000 for qualifying senior. The Veterans Work Off Abatement Program for $1,000 for qualifying veteran. And do we need to se separate that out? Oh, I'm sorry. Those are the, I just skipped over into the abatement yeah. funds too. So fortunately, and on the senior fund, we have to we have those okay. are yeah those are I did overshot. So we stop at the DPW reuse uh, committee revolving fund. Twenty six. Uh, any discussion on these items? On the revolving. Please call the roll. What's that? It, uh, the motion was made by uh, Council Murphy, and I think Council Second. Second. Yep. Second. Yes. 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 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. A revolving take to impact. We take 27, 28 as a group. Um, there is one amendment on 28. There was some language okay. amendment uh, change on that, so I don't okay. know if you want to separate that out. Let's it, separate it, them out. Okay. The uh, <clears throat> number 27, uh, so we'll deal with this one first. The motion's been made uh, by Councilor Adams and seconded by Councilor Murphy. This is a senior work off abatement program, $1,000 per qualified senior. Um, any discussion on this item? <clears throat> Roll call. Yes. 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 On number 28, this is the uh, Veterans Work Off Abatement Program for $1,000 per qualifying veteran. I'll take the motion. So moved. Seconded. They, there has been a deletion because, as you recall, during the last time there was a redundant qualification veterans over a certain age when veterans qualify period okay uh, and, uh, right That's correct so now that is represented as it's just veterans so. uh any further discussion <coughs> roll call yes 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 yes, yes. Uh, Councilor Murphy, you want to move any of uh, the um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to move uh, the capital projects, which are 29 through 34 Two. as a group. Second. That's three, correct. Motion to me and second to move them as a group. Okay with that? Okay. Um, all right. So I can catch up here. Uh, <clears throat> the first one is item number 29, and that's the capital projects appropriation uh, from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance of the free cash of $972,500. Item 30 is capital projects appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation parking of $290,855. Number 31 is capital projects appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation sale of land account, uh, $319,000. Number 32 is the capital project appropriated from FY2006 capital project for the sidewalk design project reprogrammed for traffic calming projects, and that's $40,000. Uh, number 33 is the appropriation of funds for replacement vehicles for the DPW, and that's $360,000. And the final financial order there uh, for capital is uh, authorizing the city treasurer with approval from the mayor to appropriate funds for street resurfacing to the tune of $500,000. Any discussion on these? <coughs> I, I would just, I, I would just, just praise uh, many of the capital investments we're making this year, um, not the least of which would be uh, street resurfacing for half a million dollars, which is urgently needed. So I think that's one of the more exciting parts of this budget. I'm glad we're making these investments. Any other comments? Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay. Item number 35. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. This is for. Uh, $316,700 to be appropriated from the FY14 general fund undesignated fund balance, aka free cash to legal services. You discussed this, capital stabilization and stabilization accounts. And there's a request for two readings. First reading is the motion's been made. Any discussion on these? Discuss finance. Any other questions? Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Is there a motion to suspend? Suspend Rule 14. Second. To approve. Rule 14. The motions are made to suspend Rule 14, which requires a second reading in the next meeting. Um, 
So the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, any further discussion on this item? On no. Actually, I'll accept the motion on second reading. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Got to do these things in order. All right. Roll call, please. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Fine. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yes. <coughs> Yes. 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 Item number 36. Also, there's a request, as you've heard, in finance for two readings. It's the $57,522 uh, budgetary transfers for FY uh, 2014 to the EOY. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? It's not. What's no, no. It's a head scratch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sold to the counselors. <laughs> um, <laughs> roll call, please. Council Carney? Yes. Council Blake? Yes. Council Klein? Yes. Council Murphy? Yes. Council O'Donnell? Yes. Council Sheriff? Yes. Council Yes. Yes. Suspend uh, rule 14. Motion made to suspend rules. Second. Second. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of waiving the second reading at the next meeting, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Move second. 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 Please move. Is there a second? I second it. And there's a second by Councilman LaBarge. Any further discussion? <coughs> yes. Council Dwight. Yes. 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 <laughs> Are you here? Yeah, it's okay. I thought she said Klein. That's what okay. I know. <laughs> you just, you just <laughs> I can't believe she's not here. That's what I thought. She didn't yell out, Carney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and by the way, all these requests for two readings issue for the public's purposes is uh, the reason we have to is we need to close out the budget before the next meeting. So that is why, and this is clean, cleaning up accounts and just taking care of business. We, we normally try to avoid doing two readings in one meeting. Next up is item 37. It's a $1,700 gift toward the installation of, ra of a rainbow crosswalk on Main Street. Move to approve. Second. Second, any further discussion on this? Council Rep. I just want to ask if, if this was a complete reimbursement of supplies. I don't believe it was a full, fully. Um, I know that the uh, Board of Public Works uh, had a meeting uh, and the individuals who were doing the fundraising had pledged to raise that. That was the original estimate of how much it was going to be. I do think there are some additional costs that happened, but at that point, um, I believe the Board of Public Works decision was just to go ahead and um, and cover the additional costs. So, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, okay, no further questions. Roll call, please. Council Labarge. Yes. Council Murphy. Yes. 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 Suspend rule 14. Second. Motions are made to suspend the rules for the second reading at next meeting and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the on the suspension? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll accept the motion. Move to second. Okay. Motions are made and seconded for the second reading. Any further discussion? Uh, but by the way, I, I should say that the 1700 this is to authorize the acceptance of the seventeen hundred dollars of course that's i wasn't laid out in the narrative here but this is the money's been donated we are required to vote on whether we're going to accept the money or not that's what this vote is for okay roll call please yes 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 Next up is $81,650 to be appropriated for the demolition of a condemned structure at 171 King Street. Move approval. Second it. Just made and seconded. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on this item? 
that we heard discussed in finance. Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. 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 Suspend rule 14. Motions are made to suspend rules. Second. And seconded. Any further discussion on the suspension of rules? Move to approve. Wait, wait, hang on a second. <laughs> so, all those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Move to approve. Second. Okay. Motions have been made in second for second reading. Um, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Next up is $2,450 appropriated from the CPA budget for the Fitzgerald Lake, Lake Invasive Plant Eradication Project. Move approval. So motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Well, second. now we'll ask okay. for now, now there's discussion. Yeah, I just have, uh, I'm not sure if it's the mayor or, or uh, I see that Sarah LaValle is here also, if she could answer a couple of questions and be recognized or whether it would be the mayor to anyone who might answer some questions Sarah on this. LaValle. What's that? <laughs> I'll accept a motion to recognize Sarah LaValle. If, if it's about the conservation. Yes, it is on this. Yeah, one. I guess yeah. I would defer. Okay. Is there a motion to recognize Sarah LaValle? So moved. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hello, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. All right, so I'm here primarily as staff to the Community Preservation Committee, but I can also as act as staff to the Conservation Commission Great. because I'm their agent as okay. well. Um, so the, the Community Preservation Committee voted in May to award the CPA funds to the Broadbrook Coalition for this project to remove the non-native invasive Phragmites australis from the Broadbrook um, watershed. So this patch is located in the Broadbrook Gap parcel, which is a recent acquisition, so this area has never been treated before. Um, it's an isolated area that's not easily accessible. Um, some st a few strands of this plant were identified last year with binoculars. And during this growing season, Broadbrook Coalition noticed that it had grown to almost an acre, which Phragmites is pretty notorious for doing. Um, so it's a dangerous plant to native ecosystems because they quickly form extensive monocultures that don't really have any value to the ecosystem of the United States. This is a plant from Asia, and our, our plants and animals don't don't work with this plant at all. Um, so BBC is a valued partner of the Conservation Commission. They've had primary day-to-day -day management of Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area for a number of years, so this is their application. Um, and the Community Preservation Committee agreed that this was a priority project to address this year. Councilor. Oh, good morning. You're good. So you, we, I'm not sure you were here in public comment, but somebody uh, spoke to who knows about these things about perhaps there being alternatives. You know, we had the same kind of discussion a while back of um, when we were looking at the, uh, the playing fields. And I'm just wondering if that discussion came up in either cons, CONSCOM or you know, CPA, whether there are viable other alternatives. And if there's um, pressure right now to get this approved this evening, or if that discussion might continue. So I'm just kind of curious as to, and first of all, it, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for both the members of the, of the Conservation Commission and Broadbrook Coalition, um, and they, they do a lot of due diligence. So I'm, I'm hesitant to not vote for this tonight, but I just want to make sure that discussion came up, and I'd like to know what, what kind of things they said. It did, yes. Um, so the Community Preservation Committee and the Conservation Commission as well aren't experts on herbicide use, but they do defer to the experts. Um, Broadbrook Coalition works with Politan Ecological Services, which is a, a really well-known and respected firm in the area. And they always use um, hand pulling and other metho methods when possible. <coughs> they indicated that that just wasn't an option in this case. So, so it did, and just want to make clear. So they indicated they, do, they did look at another option. Yes. Uh, it can't be mown because it is, it's in the water and it can't be burned for the same reason. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councilor O'Donnell, Councilor Sherrill, and then Councilor Adams. Yeah, my, my concern is that last council meeting, uh, Councilor Klein, is she here today, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard her more. We keep referring to her. <laughs> um, um, Councilor Klein raised some, wherever she is, she, uh, she raised some, some good concerns. And um, Councilor Sherrod just shared with me a, a, a letter that 
I, I think everyone got around 5 o'clock um, from the contractor. Which I sent out as soon as I received yeah. that. Right. Well, of course, it's not your fault. Uh, but it, so my, my thinking goes to a council inspector was, was asking is whether this has to be done tonight, because I certainly have, haven't read that letter. Um, and I think Councilor Klein's um, concerns are, are important to address. I don't know that they, they have been at this stage. Um, unless you feel like you can summarize, if you've read the letter and you can summarize it, you know. And sure. Um, so again, he's the expert, so I'm just summarizing his words. But um, so Policy Ecological has done a lot of Fragmites management projects over the past uh, nine years using different types of methods, all with good results. Uh, he indicated that using herbicides for the work shouldn't be taken lightly, and he absolutely wouldn't prescribe their use unless it was absolutely necessary, which he feels that it is in this case and that he views the threat of Phragmites within this particular marsh system as a greater threat than those posed by judicious herbicide use. Um, and while the active ingredient in this herbicide is glyphosate, which is the same active ingredient that's in Roundup, the surfactant that adheres to the plants is not the same as that that's in Roundup. This is actually approved um, for aquatic uses. And it won't be sprayed. It will be individually applied to each plant. So there's, there's no transfer by uh, potential spraying methods and contamination that way. Thank you. Councilor Chair? Um, as Councilor O'Donnell was mentioning, we, and you you also mentioned, we, this, Councilor Klein had asked two weeks ago for more information, and it looks like they just got this information to you, and you forwarded it to us, but at 5 o'clock, and just by the fact that magically the Wi-Fi was working in here, I, <laughs> I saw that it was here, but I, I don't think probably any of us have, have read it. Um, so, I feel like I I would be more comfortable if I had more time to review this and really see what they had said and then see what other options there sure. are. Um, Broadway Coalition does want to get going on this as soon as possible because the right. threats of this going and other growing season are, are really you, pretty huge. But as long as it's done this year. Uh, do you know why it took year. him so long to get this information to you? I believe he was out of town in the field. Uh, Councilor Adams, then Councilor Carney, then Councilor Specter. No Councilor Specter. Can't talk. You know, I, I wanted to echo as well that I haven't had a chance to read uh, the memo. But um, I also was wondering if you can address, uh, in public comment it was stated that, um, well, that manufacturers do the research sometimes for these things and that Denmark has banned glyphosate, if I'm saying it right. What? Um, You're close. Close. <laughs> um, so, it went, so it's kind of concerning to me that countries actually ban that the use of that chemical. Um, so could you respond to that? That I I can't speak to. Um, I do know that generally there are a lot of herbicides and other chemicals as well that that aren't accepted for use in other countries for a variety of reasons that are commonly used here. So the, also another question I have is like the contractor um, it states that they believe it's safest. Do, do, do they have any any evidence backing that statement up? Uh, he did provide links to an, a number of studies. Oh, is, is which, it? Yeah, which okay. you would be able to take a look at if okay. you have more time. Councilor Carney. Um, I am prepared to support this tonight just because I do believe that the threat um, of the Phragmites is uh, really um, a serious threat. And to have gone two strains gone to an acre in less than a year is something that's a grave concern. Um, to me, but I, I also defer to Broadway Coalition, who's been the steward for that that area, that lake, and, and a volunteer basis. I mean, a lot of work and a lot of responsibility, I think. Um, and so I defer to them in this and to their request, and would respectfully ask mm. if people would support that, just because I I would hate to see one more strand. If ultimately we will we will move forward in um, eliminating this. Uh, invasive species as soon as possible, um, I think we should just go forward and do it. I, I'm prepared to support it tonight, and I would be fearful of us delaying this too much further. Uh, Council LeBart. Um, just like I said um, two weeks ago, I brought in some information about the plant in general, and when Wayne was here, I <coughs> also questioned him on some of it. I understand where Councilor Alyssa Klein had concerns about with the Roundup, but we really need to look at that area, and I agree with Councilor Carney, the Broadbrook Coalition, all the volunteers do a wonderful job there, 
And I think we need to look at the wildlife and the type of species that we have there, and that immediate action should be done on it. It's, it seems to me, if I understood Ms. LaValle correctly, that as long as we weren't listing by the end of the year, we should be safe. So I, I don't, I don't, I didn't say, I didn't get a sense of urgency um, that others may, may, may seem there is. Um, d again, do you think we're relatively safe if we vote on this in, in July 10th? Uh, yeah, I, okay. I think Thank that would and, be fine. And, 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 and being that that's the case, I, I, I would like to look at the other information before I vote. And if it's tonight, I'm going to have to vote no. So my preference would be a postponement. Thank you. Councilor Sherrill. Um, there's, uh, despite it being applied individually, there's concerns that were, that were raised at public comment that, that the application would, since it's in the water, this particular herbicide spreads in water fairly easily. Do you know anything? No. So the, the herbicide does eventually break down into n not in any way harmful organic material, and a lot of that is determined by the, the type of surfactant or the basically the, the sticky soap that's used to make it stick to the plant. Um, and because this is approved for aquatic uses, then it doesn't transfer as readily as Roundup does. The, the, the things that I would like to know going forward is uh, glyphosate, of course, as you said, does break down quickly, doesn't have a very long <coughs> Surfactants, are, of course, are always the biggest concern, and actually they're the most pernicious in these things. Um, this is topical application as opposed to spraying. And you're right, the surfactant, actually the purpose is to, it's a soapy uh, substance basically to break down the oils on the plant so that the glyphosate can be introduced into the plant. But I need to know, the surfactant thing is of particular concern, and um, you know we heard one uh, one expression of application being spraying, which is that's vastly different than painting. Uh, I want to make sure that we're that's point in fact what's happening. I know that Rodeo has a different surfactant than than Roundup. Um, the fact is, is it may not be any more or less pernicious so that's that's a particular concern and and surfactants last a lot longer and once introduced into the water system that they they don't break down as readily as the glyphosate so all those things those are clearly questions that we need to know going forward and um, and you know whatever would and and I have an op maybe this is explained in these letters which I didn't even know I got so now I just saw the letter so we'll have a chance to bone up on our biochemistry and and its impacts on on the environment and all that said I, I concur with Councillor Carney that I know that people who are uh, deeply dedicated to the least harmful uh, mitigation for property that they cherish uh, that is their charge and that is their, their ethos and I, I, I give that a lot of credence but at the same time I'd feel a lot more comfortable knowing the science better. I don't claim to be, I know there are other, we've had counselors in the past who claim great expertise in this area and I will not make that claim. So, but the fact is if we do have the capacity to learn and understand. So if, if that's possible, I, it sounds like the preference here would be to postpone this vote on this issue. Now, the only other question I would have is, it would be of Susan Wright and the mayor, is there, it, does this gum up the works for you guys as far as uh, sort of, uh, having these funds uh, not quite make the budget deadline? Well, they're thinking, point of order on this. Yeah. Is it possible to prove the funds with a stipulation that, uh, without directing it specifically to uh, I think that gets what, what's being used? I think it gets think a little so. trickier than okay. we have to be at this point. These are not, they're, once, these are funds that don't, they're not going to go away after June. 3rd. Exactly. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. All right. that's, all right. So that's, um, so should it be, should a determination be made by July, the July 10th meeting, then it's, it's entirely possible to do two readings then, and you'll know one way to the, um, July 10th on this issue. So move to postpone till July 10th. Second. 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 Motions are made and seconded to postpone till July 10th. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Uh, nay here. Councilor Carney, any abstentions? Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. I, I know we'll be seeing you in a bit. <laughs> it's, um, 
The next up is the financial order of $2,400 to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation land on Dyke Road. And this is also a request for So moved. Second it. Motions have been made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? Second, second reading. It is second, second reading. <coughs> I'm sorry, it is second reading. It's not a request for two readings. Yeah, this is motions made on second reading and seconded. Any further discussion on this? I would like four readings <laughs> just because I really support it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any other <laughs> thoughts on that besides Councilor O'Donnell's <laughs> sane request? <laughs> Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to throw my voice. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor yes. That's that's how I'm going to control that. Uh, the motion passes in second reading. Uh, next up is item 41, which is the donation of land off Stone Ridge Drive. This is the second. <coughs> Move to approve. Is that second? <coughs> second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, I will ask the secretary to call the roll. <coughs> yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 I hope you're not debating business that is no, on no. the agenda. No. <laughs> Just to make sure. Ooh, <laughs> get a timeout. Okay, <laughs> get a timeout. <laughs> All right. Up the orders and ordinances. Um, item number one is uh, comes with no recommendation. Uh, this is to uh, amend the charter rules of the finance committee. Number eleven order of business. Councilor Adams. I'm withdrawing this because I'm going to resubmit it at a later point. And the reason why is I realized yesterday that. If this is going to do what I intended to do, it needs a change to another rule. So I'm going to resubmit it. I'll resubmit it again after I redraft the rule. It's rule number 29 that needs to be amended in order to get this to do what I hope it does. So the, the order has been, the sponsor has removed the order from the agenda. So next up, item number two, this is to amend 312-102, uh, Schedule 1, Parking Prohibited All Times. On Maple Street, this comes with a positive recommendation <coughs> from uh, Transportation and Parking Commission on May 20th, 2014. Positive recommendation from ordinance as well. It's two together. Two together. So can, can we take actually two, three, and four two, together? Three, four, which all correspond to the same, address the same thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll second that to okay, move as a group. group. Those as a group. The, uh, sec the second item is limited time parking on Maple Street. And the next one is on street and off street handicap parking spaces on Maple Street. All coming with the same recommendations from both ordinance and transportation. So moved. Second it. Uh, you want to speak to this, Councilor O'Donnell? Sure. I, I would defer to Councilor DeBarge if she wants to explain it, but it adds a handicap parking space, as Ms. Shaughnessy explained during public comment. And the Transportation and Parking Commission gave, it a, gave these ordinances to do that a positive recommendation. Yes, um, Councilor, I, mean, um, I and Pat Shaughnessy and Alex did a site visit on the concerns of many residents that we've had for the past two years of having the handicapped parking being placed up on Maple Street. And we spent a lengthy time at that site, and people are going to be very, very happy about this because we only have one handicap parking up on Main Street in Florence, but it's on the side of the Florence Savings Bank. That's the only one that we have. Uh, any further discussion? Any three okay. items? No? Okay. Hit it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. 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 
Uh, the motion passes first reading. Need to next be voted on on July 10th. Um, so that's one we're looking at that next. <laughs> Running out of things to say. Uh, next up, um, do you? The, this is on. This is also out of TPC. And the, this is uh, to amend 312, chapter 312-117, a schedule 14 on street and off street handicapped parking spaces, on Henshaw Avenue. Again, with a positive recommendation. So moved. Second. Made and seconded. Also a positive recommendation from ordinance. Council Donald, um, I, I again would um, defer to, to Councillor Specter, um, who proposed this. But uh, this is um, a handicapped parking space that is no longer needed, um, and so the Transportation Parking Commission uh, gave a positive recommendation to removing that handicapped parking space. But you may wish to elaborate. I've so. Well said. Okay. Any other discussion? This is <coughs> establishing more handicapped spaces on Henshaw. It's removing one. Uh, removing one. Removing one. Yeah. <laughs> that is no longer needed. needed. Yes. No longer necessary. I yes. do recall the discussion. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, any further discussion? Yes. 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 Next up is to amend uh, Chapter 312-102, Schedule 1, Parking pro uh, Prohibited All Time on Massasoit Street. This comes with a positive recommendation from TPC and a positive recommendation from Ordinance. Yeah, the next two I, I would like to refer to Councilor Spector to explain the rationale. Okay. Uh, I'll need a motion put on the floor. Oh, sorry. I so moved. Second. Councilor Specter, you want to improve your eloquence from the last time? <laughs> Any announcements? <laughs> High bar. Um, <laughs> so number six, uh, the Massasoit Street uh, parking prohibited at all times. There are going to be, there may be some other ordinances coming forward. The reason for this is there, um, there are a number of changes that are now happening around the Y. Some of which have to do with some long-term problems around there that that need needed to be addressed, and some of those have to do with the fact that the whole the Y parking situation is changing somewhat. Um, this particular one was is a, a new signage that actually I think should have been there already down from the corner for visibility and it's for safety issues that we're asking this to uh, put in place. Any other questions about this? Any further discussion? Uh, roll call. Yes. 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 That passes in first reading. We'll be voted again on July. That's a third. Number <coughs> item ordinance number seven here is to amend uh, chapter three twelve dash one seventeen, uh, schedule fourteen. Uh, sorry, schedule sixteen on street and off street handicapped parking spaces. This is on Prospect Street. Also with a positive recommendation from TPC and ordinance. Uh, motion. Well, well, second. Uh, now for discussion, It's actually, um, although the agenda says handicapped parking spaces, the ordinance is parking prohibited at all times. And that is actually what is being changed. It's the correct? same. Yes, that is correct. What's, what's requested here is uh, Chapter 312-117, which is the same thing as, which is handicapped parking spaces. On the actual ordinance, it says parking order. prohibited at all times under the. Okay. 312-102. Three, yeah. So the agenda may have stated it wrong. I believe so, yes. Uh, um, looking at number six? Yeah, if we're looking at the actual. Um, yeah. What came through is the recommendation of the ordinance. It's, the ordinance is written correctly. Okay. Yeah, this is this is uh, the agenda's wrong. It's uh, three twelve dash one oh two of set code. Um, I have a concern then, because the posted agenda actually stipulated one thing. Anyone who might have an objection. It's also uh, is that uh, isn't it twice? Let me look at the agenda because I think it's 
The agenda has 312.02, unless that's the one we just passed. It's 312.02. Massasoit. Massasoit. Right. This is this is actually now this is a prospect. 312 on prospect. 117 prospect. on prospect. Oh, I see. So yeah. then the, okay. the what, what I would we I would be um, I think it would be fine to postpone this to the next meeting if I, I will request two readings at the next meeting. I understand. Do that. Okay. okay. I mean, in the concern here is that, as I said, we publish the agenda. Anyone who's prepared to object to this yeah. might object to Just trying to, this, the parking issue around the Y is, is they're, they're working on the parking now. So oh, just no, if I, we I, could move this ahead, that would be you've fine. You've been annealed in the tortures of in the fires of hell, and I understand <laughs> you get credit for that. And they'll just toast you just a little bit. Longer. Yeah. Right. Ask Council Murphy on Middle Street. <laughs> Third Council session, it's coming back. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so this brings us up to amend uh, chapter 312-75, this is the compression release engine brake use operation of heavy commercial vehicles. Comes with a positive recommendation from TPC and a positive recommendation from ordinance. For motion. Motion. Move to approve. Second. For discussion. Yes. Council of Large. I'm going to support this 100%. Um, I think Councilor Dwight, if you can recall, and especially Councilor Adams, who spent an, a lengthy time on Route 66 of the problems we were having with the um, engine brake problems and the noise, and that ordinance was put in place by, I think, the mayor, I, and, Rich, and, and Jesse. And um, Councilor um, President, is there some way that you could check out, that's my request, I see all these streets that are being involved. I did talk with Ned Huntley about three months ago in regards to complaints of having that problem again over by Glendale Road, which was the big problem of the engine braking again. And he said that the state had stated, because it was understood that signage eventually would be placed throughout the city in certain areas, and we assumed Route 66 would have the signage for prohibiting engine braking. And that said that the state said that they would not allow the signs to be placed on state property. Could you check that out? Because um, all these streets apparently are going to have signs, but it was understood with our previous but, ordinance. That's, of course, presuming it passes. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Council Murphy, did you have? Mm -hmm. Well, interestingly enough, this is placed in 312.75 where it talks about compression braking, but it really doesn't change compression braking. Um, it, it, cha it prohibits heavy vehicles on these streets and asks for signage, but it doesn't say anything about compression braking, really. So, it, it, you know, and I'd be happy to read it, but it talks about prohibiting heavy vehicles in the directions on the streets listed and signs it, but it really doesn't change anything to do with the use of compression brakes. That's correct. even though it's in that section. Council <laughs> do you want to address that? Sure. Yeah. Um, that that councilor, you're correct about that. Um, this ordinance does two things. One, there there's a current list listing of streets under section B which are prohibited for heavy commercial trucks to travel. Um, and we're not adding any new streets. Um, we're doing two things. Um, one, I, th I view this as kind of closing a loophole in those prohibitions. Right now, there are at least two official escape routes or detours that I know of, Lincoln Avenue and Phillips, for trucks that come off the highway and legitimately, honestly, make a mistake in which direction they, they travel. They need to avoid striking the bridge. Um, this would simply say that it's, of course, it's okay to do that, to avoid hitting the bridge, but you can't keep doing it over and over again because it's easier than going up Damon Road. Exactly. Um, which residents suspect happens from time to time, although I don't have exact data on those numbers because we don't track that. Um, and secondly, it does establish signage on all those listed streets. Um, there was discussion in the Transportation Parking Commission that if we added the $300 fine, which is the maximum under state law, we can, we can, um, we can find someone for violating this law, that it would be more of a deterrent than it is now. Um, and finally, it says, let's actually make sure we have signs. 
One, one street where there is no sign for heavy commercial vehicles is Parsons Street, which of course is home to uh, Bridge Street School. We definitely want to make sure that trucks do not use that as, as, um, as an escape route. Can, can I ask you about the compression brake yeah. question, though? This is, this is being described as um, compression brake release, which is vastly different. I mean, obviously, trucks can't, if they're not allowed to travel on that road, they're not allowed, right. you know, theoretically yep. not allowed to use any brakes, yes. right? Or they're, it's, not, uh, they're not supposed to be on there anyway. Well, I don't want to any. No. But the fact is, I'm not sure how compression release engine brakes became part of this. I believe, uh, so, you know, section 312.75 is simply entitled compression release engine brake use. I believe that that part is in section A, and I just, I started in, in section B. So if I were to summarize section A, it says that those compression release brakes or Jake brakes, mm -hmm. right. um, as we professional truckers call them, uh, are discouraged, but they're not prohibited because of safety. They, ha they have safety applications. I mean, th those are my objections. I, my objections are on because those are actually, those are safety devices. Exactly. They do create loud noise, and um, I, but they are another means by which a truck moving at speed can reduce speed. They're loud. Some drivers tend to use them more often than not because that's for whatever reason. Exactly. But I have a real problem when we start to limit safety processes when we're actually trying to eliminate or reduce truck traffic on particular roads. Right. And in fact, that would remain unchanged. <laughs> yeah, just as a clarification, um, Councilor O'Donnell's amendment does nothing around the already um, existing legislation around the compression brakes, the Jake brakes. That was four years ago, or was it some time ago when the original? Um, proposed ordinance would have uh, limited the use of Jake Briggs far, far more than what, what's presently in the, and in fact, I think there's the whole um, acknowledgement that they are a safety mechanism, and we heard from many, many mm -hmm. uh, truckers and people in that business, and that was kind of the compromise um, legislation at the time. So. The amendment, though, offered tonight has nothing to do. It just happens a coincidence that it's in, in that. that it's in the and same. I've had a, I had conversations okay. with a couple of folks who thought when they saw this that it had to do with the compression brakes, and it doesn't really. Although it does deal with the fact that if there are people using them presently on the question that I was people using them on Jackson Street, for example, what I told them was if you read it, that they shouldn't be on, they shouldn't be on Jackson Street in the so first we're establishing place. establishing truck restrictions and it just happens to be under the chapter of compression brakes. Because that's where the, uh, the heavy industrial use, right. that place was there already, and then we, in order for them to put in a place for the compression brakes back four years ago, they put it in that section. But then Can you find out? we are de facto, though, just an email to Ned. What? restricting Ned. compression brake use on these restricted roads. He said this thing. They're already, they're all, the, those vehicles are already prohibited from being on those roads in the first place. I understand place. that. But Do should they find themselves on that road, we're also adding to the fact that they will not be allowed to use Jake brakes. No. Uh, they get a fine if they do. That's all. My, that's, that's a prohibition. Um, I, I wish I had. If they're being on there. I wish I had Section A, which I believe is the compression brake section in front of me, which I don't. I but, can pull it up. Thank you. Jeez, but I do not believe there is a, any kind of prohibition or fine attached to use of compression brakes no, anywhere so. in the city. There isn't. But That's I'll my understanding. And I unlike all four years ago, I don't think there was. Unlike the Jake brakes themselves, th this ordinance is silent on that subject. It doesn't uh -huh. change. It doesn't uh -huh. change the status quo. It no. does not change. Yeah, as as Councillor Casey so eloquently put it, they're better than squashing somebody. Yeah. yeah. Believe it or not, I actually was a truck driver and used Jake brakes. And yeah. uh, um, they are actually a critical safety mm -hmm. feature on our right. vehicle. And if we had suddenly by accident, I, I understand we don't want them on those roads. But at the same time, I don't want to, if they're on Jackson Street as a perfect example, if they need every braking apparatus possible to stop in order not to hit somebody, particularly a kid going to school, that I'm not, mm -hmm. Inclined. They're already allowed by our, so that's why I want to read the ordinance if I can pull it up. In fact, if they get a ticket, if they get a fine, it's for being on the road in the first place, that not for using the brakes. Exactly. They won't get fined for using the brakes, they get fined for being on the road. 
Then my suggestion would to be amend the title of the chapter at some point. Yep, that's I great. think so too. I think, I think, I think it's it, it is, it is uh, does not transmit to people interested in trying to find out about this the proper that's true. the proper disposition of this it. ordinance. Okay. We can do, it do, do you really want to pull those up? I can I just have to find if it. You, if you want to do it tonight, it it. here it is. Uh, again, the number three ten. 31275, or as Council suggested, we could do it at second reading. Why don't, why don't we consider it second reading so we can okay. we don't, don't worry. We don't jerry rig something crazy. So. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll work on that for and for sure. second reading. It sounds like a good recommendation. Is Councilor Adams? Um, <laughs> 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 Are you reading it here? It Are you I have it here. I had a different yeah. question, but I don't want to take us on a route we don't want to go. Uh. Yeah, I think I, I, I think some clarity is important here, particularly yes. if you're going to find someone three hundred dollars. They better be clear on what they're getting fined for, and um, so we're clear on that. So, uh, in first reading, despite the uh, the introductory title, this is a this is a limit a restriction associated with a fine for trucks operating on the listed roads. And and if you'd like, I can yep. read the roads. Sure. You want those? Uh, Day Avenue uh, from Bridge Street, Elizabeth Street from Bridge Street, Jackson Street from Bridge Road. Make the distinction for people who are, <laughs> there are two different roads, just so everyone's clear. Uh, Lincoln Avenue, southeasterly direction from Bridge Street. North Street from Market Street, North Street, southwesterly uh, direction, Lincoln Avenue. Uh, Orchard Street, Bridge Street, Parsons Street from Bridge Street, and Prospect Avenue. Um, move the question. The and just, just to clarify, those are, of course, in the law currently. Right. Yep. Uh, any further discussion on this? In first reading, uh, everyone prepared for a vote? Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're getting down to it. This is item number nine. This is to amend chapter 350, section 2.1, affordable units. And the recommendation uh, from ordinance was affirmative. Um, is there a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. This is a referral. Oh, yeah. Is this it a is referral? It looks like it comes with a recommendation from you guys. It comes with a recommendation for referral. <laughs> for referral. So I, refer. this is a referral. I would move we refer it to economic development. Got it. I would second that. The motion is to move this to Ed Lowe. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor of referral, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? And, and, and oh, look. Item number 10. Another you may have seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> this is to amend Chapter 350. That's to extend the moratorium through December 31st, 2014. The moratorium, of course, on the seventh item of zoning, I mean, uh, of seven units or more. Um, and we had a, this is a process issue, just so everyone's clear. It now has a positive recommendation from ordinance. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this item? Council Murphy, you want to? Oh, oh, oh uh, just, <laughs> just, just quickly. Um, planning board and or planning board is sort of taking its time to perfect these seven or more units issue that primarily affects or has great interest in Ward Three down off Hockenham Road. And the moratorium is going to run out at the end of the month. It's going to take another month or two to perfect it. So we don't want the moratorium to run out before. The public hearing is closed and action is taken to change it. So we're just extending the moratorium. I believe it's extended through the end of the year, though we have, we're real comfortable with the fact that it probably will be settled by September and then people can take advantage of that, that new zoning down there and it will be the way people want it to be. So this just extends it till the end of the year. Probably not all to be used. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion on this? moratorium that won't go away. Uh, Many of them. Yes. 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 
Attorney. Yes. 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 Suspend Rule 14. Is there a motion to suspend Rule 14? Second. Second. And seconded. Any de debate on the suspension rules? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Except for motion, second reading. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. 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 The, I have appointed Council of Barge to the Enrollment Committee. Um, in the absence of Councilor Klein, for some reason, Councilor Klein's not here. We can't find her. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, she hasn't voted. Is Councilor Klein here today? <laughs> Was she here earlier in the evening? <laughs> I don't. I'm, I want. Investigation and missing <laughs> and counter client. client. I don't yeah. think the two are unconnected. I think that I think there may be something. To there are no updates from me. Uh, are there any committee chairs who have any updates? Uh, I want to remind the public that we only have one meeting in July. Actually, so I do have an update in that respect. We only have one meeting in July and one meeting in August. What's the date of the August, please? It's uh, August 14th. August 14th. Thank you. Uh, July, we will be meeting July 10th, not July 3rd, because if we could, if we could corral more than four counselors on July 3rd, it'd be pretty impressive. So it'll be on July 10th, and August 14th is the, is the following meeting after that, and then we're back to full-scale councilship. Um, any information requests? All right. Any new business? No. Um, I will accept the motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, don't say a word. Any abstentions? Thank you. Thank you all very much.